everyone, Tim Schofield here. And as a lot of you know, I generally tend to use Android phones a lot more than iPhones, so it's always a nice change of pace when I go ahead and put my SIM card in the iPhone every year. So I wanna go ahead and talk about the 8 Plus. I asked you guys on Twitter, and you wanna see the 8 Plus before the 8, more coverage on the 8 coming very soon. But now I wanna get into my full review of the iPhone 8 Plus. To start things off, let's begin with design of the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, first of all, you'll notice it looks very similar to that of the 7 Plus. I don't want to rag on design too much. I just kind of want to say I'm upset that Apple really didn't take any risks with design of this phone. Some people like it, some people don't. I just think in comparison to other phones out there, this just looks outdated. The back of the phone did get a bit of an update now that it has glass. You can wirelessly charge it. I do a video on wireless charging. I'll link to it down below. See that Apple logo and those dual cameras, more on that in a little bit. Taking a close look at the device, there's a little bit of a camera bump on the right side. Power button is a very premium feeling phone uh, in the hand. On the left side here is where your volume rockers are and also uh, a switch right here to put it in silent mode or ringer. And I find that I never accidentally uh, switch this and activate it, which is great because that would be a bummer if it started ringing when I didn't want it to. Now down at the bottom, you have one speaker. However, you do have another speaker within that earpiece. And then of course, this is just for symmetry and a microphone. And then also a lightning connector, which I am extremely upset that they have kept on this phone. The decision to use a lightning connector instead of USB type C connector on the new iPhone is just a little greedy on Apple's part. Obviously they want to grandfather their previous phone users in with their lightning cables, but it doesn't include fast charging, which should be a standard by any phone that you're gonna pay upwards of. $800 for and you have to pay an extra I think $75 if you want the lightning to USB type C connector so you can get fast charging so you have to pay extra to get fast charging and charging in this phone is not fast that is one thing it's a good thing battery life is good but uh, charging on it is just very slow unless you want to shell out that 75 bucks for the fast charger and on the front is where that home button and fingerprint scanner is and the fingerprint scanner is extremely quick uh, very accurate as well. I pretty much never have to uh, set my thumb down twice. Also worthwhile to note that it is IP67 rated, so it does have some dust and water resistance as well in case it's raining, you accidentally splash some water on it, it should be just fine. There is an embedded battery, it's 2,691 milliamp hours, I believe, and overall battery life is very good. It's a little bit of a step up in the than the 7 Plus, not crazy amounts though, it does get me through the full day. Again, the only gripe I really have is how slow that charging is. The 8 Plus has an embedded 2,691 milliamp hour battery, uh, and overall battery life has been really good. One thing about iPhones that is very noticeable is the standby time is amazing. So if I'm not using my phone, it's just sitting there, rarely will it uh, drain. So I have no problem just leaving it, not plugged in when I go to sleep. And when I wake back up, it only loses a couple percentage points. Overall, I can get through a full day on the iPhone 8 Plus and then some. So overall, battery life is fantastic. Also, I want to show off a quick bug here. I'll talk about more bugs in iOS in just a second. But you'll see a really goofy one right there with YouTube app and loading everything up. But anyways, I want to talk about the display here. So it has a 5.5 inch 1080p display using a Retina technology and LCD as well. And I will say it's a very good 1080p display. However, they really needed to go with 1440p. I don't know why they didn't. Actually, I do because the iPhone 10 is going to have one. And the iPhone 10 will have an AMOLED display similar to that of the Galaxy Note 8. So overall, I just don't see why they only included a 1080p display instead of 1440p, which is noticeably different, especially with Super AMOLED, which I have a, a preference in screen technology. You may not. That's just my personal preference. And of course they see, that, see it as better because they're using it in the iPhone 10. The A Plus has dual 12 megapixel cameras. However, each lens is just a little bit different. One of them is a telephoto lens, so it has optical zoom so you don't lose any image quality when you zoom up to two times. And then the other one's just a standard wide angle lens. To show off what this means, you have a, an icon right here where you can zoom in two times and you'll see it will zoom in but it will not lose any image quality if you're in a good lighting scenario. If you're in a poor lighting scenario, it will not even use the telephoto lens. It'll just digitally zoom and the software determines if it's a good lighting scenario to actually take a picture. I will say this camera is one of the best out there, definitely rivaling the Note 8 and potentially the upcoming V30 from LG as well and just others. I might do a comparison video coming up pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. 
Anyways, lots of settings, filters, timer, live photos is still there. HDR mode is fantastic. Their post-processing is, is really good on the 8 Plus. You have a ton of options. You have photo, portrait, where you can change the lighting, natural, studio, uh, contour, and stage lighting even. I'll show off one of those pictures in just a second. You have panorama, square, and video. You can shoot 4K 60 frames per second. So you'll see how smooth that viewfinder is. We can go ahead and start a video, and it is 4K 60 frames per second, and it really doesn't get too hot at all while recording. It's just fantastic. I can't believe they included 60 frames per second in a 4K recorder on a phone. That's just insane. Hopefully my roommate doesn't get too mad for showing these, but I did jump on them and take a couple pictures. So here's just the normal picture with some depth of field effects added. However, here is the one with the portrait lighting. You'll see it gets rid of everything. No background, it just focuses on pretty much just your face as well. Not sure why you would ever need that. It does work most of the time. Uh, it is an option out there, but I don't think I'm ever gonna take a real picture that I need and I'm going to use with that setting. And like I said, some of these pictures are on my Instagram, but here's one that I shot uh, just straight up out of the wide angle lens. And here's one with the telephoto lens. One of, the, uh, one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken actually. This is in Madison, Wisconsin, but just really captures the image, the colors look great. Just overall, one of the best cameras out on any phone. The 8 Plus has Apple's new A11 Bionic processor. And overall, I could tell when playing games or doing multitasking, it flies through things. I, I really have no issues to see here. I'm just playing a quick game, very difficult through the camera. But overall, just, just really quick, I will make a note that iOS 11 is just way too buggy. And it's the first OS that's really not optimized for the hardware. You can just tell there's... A uh, frame rate drops, things get a little slow, jittery. Uh, you'll see here, it's very quick right now. A lot of times it's very fast, fluid. Uh, it does have three gigs of RAM, and I will say overall, RAM management's good. There have been a couple cases where I needed something to stay in the background and it had to reload, which was a bummer because I had some things loaded up that I needed to see. And so just occasionally, I think they should have added an extra gig of RAM. I'm not sure why they didn't just add four instead of three. But you see, jumping back to the game, I can just continue to play. For some reason, when multitasking, they got rid of the 3D touch in the corner here to activate it. I think they're bringing it back. It just kind of makes no sense why they didn't include it in iOS 11. So I will say, going to settings general, it looks like there is a new 11 0.3 update, which I have not installed yet, but this one's been out for a while, and I've ran into a lot of bugs in iOS 11, even on 11.0.2. I do want to give you an example of what I mean by frame rate drops, and I want you to notice how choppy this, this video is. This is actually when it happens. You see, I unlocked my phone, and, and just notice switching between pages, those app icons, even opening up that folder page, is just a little bit jittery, and you'll see it will get better. Uh, and, it, it, and it randomly does that. Not too often, but it's happened to me at least about 10 times. Now it's very smooth. And you'll see, look at how much smoother it is swapping between app pages and everything. So it does get better, but there's just times when I'm running through and it's just super jittery. It looks fine now, but I just think it's an iOS 11 bug where it will drop a bunch of frames. Now in iOS 11, of course, you still have your swipe down for your notifications and swipe up to get to that control center, which you can customize and add certain things as well. And I do like this gesture system where it's swipe down for notifications, swipe up to get to your control center. Now with your control center, Really strange, uh, when you turn on and off Bluetooth, it won't actually turn it off, turn the radio off, it just disconnects you. So if I tap this, it'll say disconnected from my Wi-Fi network, but if I go into settings, oops, if I jump into settings real quick and go to Wi-Fi, you'll see it says not connected and it's still on, but you'll see it says off there, but you can't actually turn the radio off to save battery within the control center, which really doesn't make sense to me. You see, I could turn it on, turn it off, and that's it. And that's the same with Bluetooth. 3D touching is as great as it has been. Uh, I, I am a big fan of 3D touching to add another layer to the operating system itself. And at first, I wasn't a fan of no back button, but I kind of got used to the, the swipe gestures from the left to actually go back. It can be a nuisance occasionally, but very rarely now. I'm actually kind of a fan of a swipe gesture, but I also wouldn't mind having a back button as well. For some strange reason, they still haven't added a quick way to get into settings. I wish you could just add a quick button to jump into the settings app because the settings app is where all of your individual app settings are, even the camera, your messaging app, everything goes through this settings app. So if you are in the camera app, 
and you want to change something, maybe the resolution, anything like that, you have to back out of it, go into the settings app and change it as opposed to maybe if you could swipe up and tap on a settings button, it would actually go ahead and just jump into those settings for you or just have it within the app. You do have iMessage, which is fantastic. I really wish Android phones have I had iMessage. It doesn't. And that is definitely a benefit of getting an iPhone over an Android phone is that iMessage and FaceTime integration where you can just go ahead and make video calls through FaceTime. That's another great integration they have. And I don't wanna dive into it too much, but notifications on iOS, I'm just not a fan of at all. Android handles notifications way better hands down. Uh, and they're just so jumbled, out of order. I mean, they are in order from when you receive them, but they need to group them. They need to have them by app, so certain apps aren't littered within the notifications. So, and I will say when you swipe away, you can swipe and hit clear. You can 3D touch and hit X. Um, you can go ahead and just tap on it. There's just so many different actions that you can go on these on these different notifications. It's just a little confusing. You can clear all by double tapping this X here. Uh, and that's a nice option. I just kind of wish they were all grouped together. So to finish everything off, I want to give some final thoughts on the iPhone 8 Plus. And overall, I have enjoyed using this phone. I have really nothing against Apple. I wanted, want them to succeed, but it's just not different enough from the iPhone 7 Plus. I would just recommend everybody to buy the 7 Plus. The camera isn't big enough of an upgrade. Um, the battery life isn't really much of an upgrade either. iOS 11's buggy on both phones. Uh, so overall, I would just say stick with your iPhone 7 Plus or even consider purchasing an iPhone 7 Plus instead of the 8 Plus or of course wait for the iPhone X. They really needed to at least do tweaks with the design um, and potentially just add some more features as well. So uh, th th that's just my full thoughts. Again, I really do like this phone. It's a premium feeling looking device. This feels a little outdated in my hand. I think the iPhone X should have been what the iPhone 8 is. Uh, so anyways, that's it. That's my full review on the iPhone 8 Plus. More to come on the iPhone 8 and some comparisons coming. So be sure to click that subscribe button. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.